Welcome to the IT Shed. In this video we're looking at CS50's introduction to program with Python, problem set for Frank, Ian and Glenn's letters. So Frank, Ian and Glenn's letters is a program from the 1990s for making large letters out of ordinary text in ASCII format, like this. We're going to use a Python module called PyFiglet. The program is going to expect zero or two command line arguments. So zero, if the user would like to output text in a random font, or two command line arguments, if the user would like to output text in a specific font, in which case the first of the two, two command line arguments should be either a dash f or a dash dash font. And the second of the two command line arguments should be the name of the font. So then we're gonna prompt the user for a string the string is going to be text that the user wishes to output in the desired font. So let's have a look at a demo. So in this case, the user implements zero command line arguments. So they call the program pythonfiglet.py and don't put any command line arguments in. So the user will be prompted for an input. In this case, it's hello world. Hello world is then outputted in a random font. So scenario two. The user inputs two command line arguments. So it calls a program, Python figlet.py, and the first command line argument is a dash f, and the second command line argument is slant, which is the name of the font the user wants the, the text to be outputted in. So hello world is the input, and it's outputted in the slant font. So the third scenario is the user also inputs two command line arguments, but in this case it's dash dash font, and he's going to input rectangles as the second command line argument for the type of font, and it's prompted for an input, and they type hello world again, and hello world is outputted in rectangles font. So if the user provides two command line arguments, and the first is not a dash f or a dash dash font as required, or the second is not the name of a font, then the program should exit via sys.exit, which we're going to have to implement into our program. And that's also going to show an error message. So these are the scenarios down here. And the error message is going to be invalid usage. So as usual, we're going to make our directory. We're going to cd into the directory and we're going to code figlet.py. So if we look at the documentation here, we see that we first have to install PyFiglet. So we pip install it. So we copy that and go over to our code. That's the first thing in our to-do list. So let's just copy it in there. You see it's installed very quickly. Okay, let's look at our to-do list. Now we're after pip installing PyFiglet already. The next thing we need to do is import our modules. And we're going to import pyfiglet, random, and sys. We're then going to have to access our classes and methods. I'll talk about that in a few moments. So let's crack on. OK, let's start by importing our modules. So our modules are pyfiglet, random, and sys. So looking at the pyfiglet documentation, we see down here, if you scroll down, we see to use from pyfiglet, import figlet. So we'll copy that. And between the documentation and the hints, it kind of tells us here what we need to do. So let's start by importing pyfiglet. We're also going to import random. And we're going to import sys. So here now we're delving into the world of classes, objects, and methods. Now, this is beyond the scope of this video because classes and objects are, they're basically um, a lesson in themselves. But let's just say here that figlet with a capital F is the class. Now that contains all the methods. It's like a little toolbox. It contains all the tools we need to get our programming done. So we're assigning that to figlet with a small f, and that becomes our object. 
the objects makes it easier to access all the information stored in the class. So it's a subclass basically of the, the class itself. So here are our methods. So get fonts is a method that's contained within the class and we're able to access our methods from the object here, which again is associated with the class. So let's create our class figlet. It's already created, it's imported here. So we're not creating anything, we're only, able to, we're only trying to access it. So figlet is our class, figlet with a small f. Now was our object because all the information here is given in to figlet here, the object. So the first method we're going to access is get fonts and that just allows us to be able to get the fonts from the class here. So we're going to create a variable called fonts and then we're going to access that information by calling our object figlet and our method get fonts. Like I said, this is a video on PyFiglet and classes and methods are beyond the scope of this. Like there's plenty of resources out there. Um, you, you can get your head around it fairly quickly once you learn from the right instructor or from the right resource. Okay, let's move on. Let's check for zero or two command line arguments. Now for this, we're going to use sysargv. So if you watched the lecture with David Malin, he mentioned command line arguments and sysargv was used. So if we go back to our lecture notes and click on command line arguments, we see here that sysargv is used. So here, for instance, we called python name.py, which is the name of the program, and our first argument is David. So name.py is going to be sysargv0. David is going to be sysargv1. Now he put a surname, if he put a surname like David Malin, then Malin will be sysargv2 and so on and so forth. So if you see down here, they're using the if statement along with the length of sysargv just to control the flow here of the if statement. So that's how we're going to utilize it in our program. Okay, let's start checking the length of our command line arguments. So if len sys.argv is equal to. Now we're just looking for the name of our program. So Python and the name of our program. So Python figlet.py to be entered with no command line arguments. So a command line argument should be zero. So if that's the case, then we're just going to if, if zero output text in a random font. So if the length of sysargv is equal to zero, but this is not going to work because remember that list started zero. So the list starts at zero. So we're just checking to make sure that, like zero is how list start, but we're checking to make sure there's one element in it. So the first element in it is zero. So if there's one element, it's zero. If there's two elements in it, it's one. If there's three elements in it, it's two, etc. So here we're converting between list starting at zero and us in the real world working from one. So if length of sysc arg v is equal to one, which means there's no argument in it, so it's just figlet.py without any argument, then we're to output a random font. So for this we're using the random module. So here I'm just going to create, get rid of this just so we can see what we're doing here. I'm going to create a new variable called selection. And I'm going to assign that to random.choice, which is a method from the random module. So we're choosing a font at random here. So random is the module, choice is the method and we need to figure out where we're choosing our fonts from. So it's normally a list. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a peer fonts that is getting all the information from the object and the class. 
and using the method get funds. So we're going to put that in here. So we're getting all our fonts information here using get fonts. We're accessing that from the object here, Figlet, and then we're saving it into our fonts variable. So that basically is like a list. It's like a list of fonts, font one, font two, say slants, uh, rectangles, whatever, and the other types of fonts are there. Using the choice method and our list here, which is that, just choosing one at random. So if it chooses that, that could be rectangles, whatever it is. And then that is assigning it to our variable here. So if we choose one at random and it assigns it to our variable. And that's what we print to the screen. Now, in order to actually print to the screen and see from our hints here, we need to use a method set font. As you see here, set font, we need to actually assign our font. So just copy that now to here. So figlet, which is our object, set font, which is our method, and we need to actually set which font we want here within the parameters. Now, F, it just denote, denotes the font, but what are we actually setting? So for instance, we could type in here, slant. So it sets the font to slant, and that's what we're going to be printing. This, we're going to be printing our uh, text as in the slant format. But remember, we're doing our random here. So this is what we need because this, which act, this is actually the container that contains the font we chose here at random. So instead, we assign font to selection. So again, if this is true then selection contains a font picked at random and then we're assigning this, the font we selected to this set fonts and that's what's going to actually print out on our screen. So that takes care of this one here. If the command line argument is zero. So the next thing we need to look at if there's two command line arguments we have to output text in a specific font. So here we're going to use elif, the len of sys.argv is equal to tree. Move that out of the way there. So why tree? So remember, we're going to call our program python figlet.py. And then we're, this one has arguments. So it's going to, the first argument has to be either a dash f or a dash dash font. And then we're going to have the name of the font we want the text printed in. So in this case, it's slant. So remember, Python lists start from zero. So that's zero, that's one, and that's two. But we're in the real world here now, and we have three arguments, which is first argument, the second argument, and the third argument. This is all very confusing, but we have three arguments here, so that's equal to three. So two is referred to up here, because in reality, we always have to call our program, which is going to be zero. So we're looking for two arguments, which are these here, the f, the dash f, and the name of the font. Okay, we now need to check to make sure that our first argument, so argument one, is a dash f or a dash dash font. So we'll use an if statement. So if sys dot argv one, because remember this is zero, this is one, and this is two, is not equal to dash f. So what are we doing here? We're checking to see is it equal to, or in this case, not equal to dash f. So if it's not equal to dash f, then we're going to check, is it equal to dash dash font? So that's going to be false because it's not equal to dash f. So now we're going to see if it's equal to dash dash font. So if sys.argv, and one again, because it's the same thing we're checking for, is not equal to dash 
fresh front. So sys dot exit. And we're going to give a reason as stipulated by the assignment. So it can be invalid usage. So if this is false and this is false, then the program will exit. This will be shown to the user telling them why it's exiting. Okay, now let's assume that the user actually entered dash f or dash dash font as the first command line argument. So in this case, dash f. So this is now true. So because this is true, then this if statement is ignored and isn't executed. We now go down to our next if statement. So what are we checking for here? So we need to check to make sure that the font, which in this case here is slant, and that is in argv2, that that is actually in the list of fonts, that the font exists. So we do that using this piece of code here. So if sysc argv2, which is here again, is in fonts, so in fonts. So when that's true, so then we access set font from our figlet object. And then we set our font to sysc argv2, which is what the user entered here. So just a recap, the user entered sysc argv1 is correct. Now sysc argv2 slant. So now this means slant. And uh, that's is set to the font using the set fonts method. So looking at our to-do list down here, it says that if it's not a valid font, display an error and exit. So here we're going to use an else statement. And we're going to copy this sys exit in a valid usage. So these two here are together, that exits if that's false. Here are together, so it exits if that's false. But we also need an else statement for up here. So what we'll do is we we'll just copy this, and we paste it down here. So as I said, that covers that. That covers that, and this else covers up here. So now, what we'll have to do is prompt the user for a string of text, and then output the text in the desired font. Let's prompt the user. User a variable called prompt. And I'm going to assign that to input, and we're going to look from input for the user. So now that's that done. So the last thing we need to do is output the text in the desired font. Now if we look back here, we also print output to the screen and then the text in the desired font. So let's look at our hints. So our hints it says print figlet dot render text. That's not a method. And the text is the rendering is the S here. So let's just copy that. Bring it over here. So what text are we rendering? Well, we're rendering this text here, prompt. That's the text inputted by the user. So prompt. But we're going to use an F string now in order to print output to the screen. And we're going to use curly braces here because this is basically one big variable. It's not a string. And we'll close it off here with our inverted commas. So we're using an F string here. We're typing output to the screen, and then we're outputting this here between the curly braces. Okay, let's try our program. We're gonna type python figlet.py with no command line arguments. Our input's going to be hello world. And it's printed to the screen in a random font. So if we do it again, and this time we do dash f, and we say slant is our font. Hello world. And there we have it. Perfect. Now let's try running it one more time. Instead of dash f, we're going to use a dash g. And we have invalid usage. Okay, now let's copy the 
check 50 and let's submit it up for checking. And there we have it, all greens. So thank you for joining me in this video. If you found it useful, I'd appreciate a like or a comment or subscribe if you haven't done so already. See you in the next one.